cops. Yeah. Of the Los Angeles variety. Or maybe it's La Cops, like The Cops. Oh, okay. Is this in Mexico? I No, this is Venice Beach, which it's, I think is in California. It would be La Policia. Near, uh, yeah, that'd be, yes, exactly. Los Puercos. Yes. Um, this is LA Cops. It's on Steam. It's kind of a dual joystick shootery strategy kind of thing. Kind of some hints of Hotline Miami and some, some of its lock-on ideas and some stuff like that. And this was developed by the L.A. Police Department? Uh, it was L.A. Cops Limited. Okay. Published by Team 17. Okay. I don't think it's actually the real Los Angeles I don't, Police Department. But, okay. But, you know, I, I, I can't say it's not. I don't know. They didn't make worms, L.A. Cops? Uh, I, I think they, they may have actually developed worms. Okay. We're going to take Kowalski. Seems like a safe bet. And do I have any points to spend? I've got four XP's here. X, XP, so we can... I could upgrade his uh, starting weapon here, or you know, just put some more money into health and uh, you know, let's, well, why not? Sure. Okay. Confirm. Uh, and we'll take Murphy. All right. Murphy has no XP to spend. Okay. Do they all have kind of the same uh, like XP options and weapons and things like that? Seems like it. Yeah. Okay. You know, same same type of upgrades here. Uh, some different starting stats, perhaps, but uh, okay. We'll take those two and go in. Are you playing with a controller? I am. All right. Huh. Kowalski has been left by his wife. It's very oh. touching. Oh, uh, some kind of like non sequitur little moments with the LA cops. Okay. Uh, kind of between missions a little bit, but generally, yeah, so we have, uh, you know, our dual joystick controls, you know, obviously you can, you can, I have it set to controller, you can use the mouse if you like, um, and that may actually be a smarter way to play this game. Really? But, uh, I've always, like, with twin stick shooters, I've always preferred It's not really, it, it's barely a twin stick shooter. Like, I'm locking onto these targets, and uh, we're walking in and shooting them. I mean, I can use twin sticks to control, but it's more of a... Like Crimson Landy kind of move your aiming reticle around okay. Hotline Miami yeah, style. Yeah, okay, that's thing. what I was thinking. Hotline Miami seems. So I'll lock onto this perp here, walk through this door, and blaze him. Yeah, this is total like isometric uh, Hotline Miami. And I can uh, rotate Ooh. the action. I like the look. I like the vivid colors and all that stuff. Looks yeah. good. Uh, so when I'm not controlling a cop, uh, that cop goes into kind of a defensive uh, posture here. We see their little cone of vision, okay. uh, where they will, uh, you know, shoot anyone that gets in their in their way here. So it basically, automatically puts them into like an Overwatch situation. Pretty much, yeah. And I, I can hit the A button here to kind of like it, tell them to go into a room. Okay. Like she'll go in here. We can kind of burst in together. Yeah. And do some stuff. Yeah. Cop stuff. Take them out, cops. Um, and yeah, you can shoot on the fly. You don't have to lock on, but I, you know, I'm, I'm locking on. Are they all kind of these bite-sized little missions? Uh, yeah, they've, they've been, <laughs> so far, I've only played the first few, but it's been, uh, you know. His name Chief Handkey? Probably. Is he a hardhead? I don't know, you don't really, I haven't really gotten to know him yet. You uh, hear about Kowalski? What about him? She left him. <laughs> a pole, a rich chick, ain't no way that was gonna happen. Whoa, that's cold, man. Put the siren on. What? Why? Because you ate the last dodo. Again. Mm. Donut jokes. I have never understood that stereotype because I've seen way more cops in Chipotle's than I've ever seen them in donut stores. Well, you know, all stereotypes take time to change. And, you know, maybe, you know, our children or our children's children will <laughs> think of cops as loving burritos. <laughs> Granted, I'm in Chipotle a lot more than donut stores, so... Well, that's, I, I mean, I think that's unfortunate. Eh, Chipotle's better than donuts. Chipotle sucks, Dan. What the fuck are you talking about? Their rice tastes like shit. Are you fucking kidding it's me? The wor it's the world's worst burrito rice. The brown and the white is both perfectly adequate. It's all adequate. like cilantroed up and fucked up. Like, it's terrible. Are you one of those people with the weird cilantro soap thing? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's probably why. Because Chipotle is just a godsend. It is great. It's like the most generic ass, you know, especially around here. No. Nope. Like, I'm not normally the, like, why would you get Chipotle, uh, the, the chain store, when you could get this other thing? Um, Chipotle is what I get when I'm feeling fancy. Otherwise, it's Taco Bell. Chipotle sure. is, like, yeah. you, you know, making a night of it. 
Yeah, I mean, I would say, you know, maybe, you know, especially in, in this town, there are, are better places to go for burritos than, than either of those places. I like Taco Bell burritos. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're, like, <laughs> wrong on that one. Um, the, their rice it, is okay? But when I, yeah, yeah, their rice is fine. Okay. Uh, but that's, it's a different thing. If I want a burrito, I want a burrito. If I want Taco Bell, I want Taco Bell. Okay. I, right? I do understand what you're saying there, yeah. yes. Huh. I will defend Chipotle till the day I die. Though. It's real good. Uh, it's gross. And the fetishization, <laughs> fetishization of it, where people are like making t-shirts and say like, yes, I know guacamole's oh, extra. It's no. like, fuck off. That stuff in off. the tumblers and all that stuff of Chipotle. Like, yeah, I, I don't get that at all. I just like going there and putting a burrito in my face. Sure. This is Chipotle Crash Course we're playing here. Yeah. All right. We're going to call our partner in here. And then, boom, come crashing through. And yeah, that's cool. I'm just going to freely shoot. Uh, I guess, actually, she got him there. But let's... Uh... I've never kicked the door open. Uh, it's fun. Like, I've never had a reason to do it, but I would I'm jump at the chance to do it. Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's pretty fun. Like, what, what situation have you had to kick a door down? I had a roommate who locked himself out of his bedroom. Okay. And uh, we decided that the, the right answer in that exact situation, uh, for whatever reason, was going to be, we need to get in this room by any means necessary and not do it the right way. Uh, so we fucking kicked it in. At the same time? Like, uh, you did synchronized door kicking? Uh, it, we tried it a few different ways. At first, it was like, okay, let's get a line of about four people all pushing on this door and see if we break it. <laughs> and sure enough, we broke the door, but not enough to actually get in. <laughs> Uh, so it had to be finished up uh, a little dirtier than that. Did he ever replace the door, or was it just a broken-ass door for it the rest of time? It was just a... So the next day, uh, he went... Uh, I, I had actually stayed home from work that day for whatever reason to work at home. And he said, hey, I'm going to go over to the abandoned house across the street and steal a door. You want to come <laughs> with me? And I said, fucking A. And we went over there. We took a door. Uh, and then without realizing that, like, doors are different sizes. Oh, There's yeah. not a uniform size for doors in homes. No, so no. The door we took was larger. <laughs> and the, the, the door stuff, the, the knob and the me mechanics inside the door were at a different height than, <laughs> than we needed. So, oh, she went down. Um, what was the fate of that door? Well, the, so uh, the big we, one. We, with the big door, it uh, it served as a table in our backyard for a little while. All right, you're resourceful at least. Yeah. Uh, so that was some very sloppy action there. Um, <laughs> one of my my partner went down. Uh, you can you can bring your partner up, I think, once per. Is is there any kind of like permadeath situation there, or like she's no, not I dead? I don't, is I don't she? Think, no, no, she's not dead. Okay, but uh, but she's you know she's not doing great. She did get shot up. Oh Rest god, my microphone fell off. Oh dear. Sir? Do you know how much restrooms cost? Mahoney. I don't see Oh, Chief Mahoney. On this station's budget, a lot. Especially when you have to buy two of them. Gee, you wanted me? Yeah, get in here, Kowalski. Meet your new partner, Joe Murphy. Sir, can no, I? No, Kowalski, you can't. I wouldn't take orders from anyone that didn't it's have a, a nose. Congratulations. I look forward to the wedding. Now get out of here. I've got janitors to call. I mean, we've been partners in all these missions leading up to this, so it just seems like these cutscenes are sort of nonsensical. Yeah. Be careful. They're armed. I'm going in. <laughs> so is there any kind of attempts at, like, stealth stuff or whatever, or is it all just kind of this... Going no, there it's and not really about up? stealth. It's just, you know, you, you, can, you can lock on and shoot guys. Are there ever innocents that you're not supposed to shoot? or? I mean, you're just... rescuing people at the end of these missions and stuff, so I assume if you are careless with your shots, that could go poorly. Oh, that's a guy there. Oh, jeez. But it's not like full-on Hogan's Alley, hey, don't shoot this person in the it middle of combat. Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Oh, there's a, that door got blasted open. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I fucked that up. You can arrest criminals by the melee attack. Interesting. In. Hmm. Okay, so there's your kind of stealth mechanic, I guess. Arrested. Nice. Uh, can I? I guess I can't get him up. Okay, well. Do you get a paddy wagon at any point? Not that I've seen. Oh, shit. Damn. All right, let's try to be careful. I'm going in. 
playing any Hotline Miami 2 yet? A little bit. Yeah? Yeah. What's your thought? I don't think I like it very much. Yeah? It, it, you know what? It seems like a game made for people that finished Hotline Miami and want to see the difficulty continue to ramp up from that exact point. See, that's not, that's not really my thing with that game. Yeah. Huh, okay. I'll try it out. I like the first one. I'm not like as enamored with it as a lot I think of other like people. the style is amazing. Yeah. You know, oh, like like for that sure. stuff's great. It's um, it's the gameplay itself. Like after a few levels, I was kind of like, all right, I get it. Um, but yeah, the style, of course, it's great. And it has all that. Um, but you know, it's it's a lot very similar stuff. Like I've only really played the early parts of the game, and it's it's really disjointed, okay. uh, story wise. I think that's you know partially that's by design, but. Oh, Jesus. Yikes. Yeah, so, you know, this game wants you to be, you know, careful. And this is the point where, actually, I think uh, if I went mouse and keyboard, it would probably be a little bit better. Were there uh, different difficulty levels? Yeah, this is the this is the starter. Okay. Destroy drug tables. Yeah. i never seen a drug table. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All sorts of video games have drug tables. Oh, I mean, in, in the flesh, I've never seen a drug oh. table. Oh. This is a table of drugs on it, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I had friends that smoked a bunch of pot in college, so I've probably seen a drug table there. Yeah, they ever put drugs on a table? They did have drugs you on a table. You ever seen a table full of drugs? I don't know, full of? Like, I don't know, they just have a little pot thing on it or something. Mm. Fire them up. Let's get this shotgun. Seems helpful. Does that carry over, or is that just like... Once? No. Okay. That's just for this level now? Yeah. There's a donut here. You can okay. pick up the donuts. There's a, a med kits and stuff, too. I'm not actually sure what the donuts do, if it's just like a health regen or what, but... Huh. Let's, uh... They have a washer and dryer in their hallway. Ah, uh, you know, people put weird stuff in weird places sometimes. you, you got to improvise when mm -hmm. it comes to putting things in your house sometime. We have murdered three of the four drug tables. Nice. Oh, see, now she has a med kit, so you, the med kit sits in reserve. Oh, so okay, I wonder so if that's the revive thing. That's got to be it. Thing. Do you think the having two characters thing um, adds a, you know, a sense of identity to this game that it might not have otherwise? I think so, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure that I think it's, like, fantastic, but it's a, it's a cool idea. Yeah. And it gives you, you know. Oh, no ammo. That's bad. Oh, Fuck. yeah. You're getting shot a lot. I got, yeah, I got careless. You know, I got fucking careless. And that's what you get. Uh, okay. This ripping soundtrack. It, yeah, it ain't bad. This is some good cop music. No, that's, that's, no, I'm using the controller. I don't know. I don't know if they call this cop music. Eh, if I was a cop, I'd probably listen to music like this. Some kind of riffy rock. I'm gonna keep pushing that door in that guy's face. And then arrest him. I got a cop friend, he pretty much just listens to Van Halen all the time. That sounds about right. <laughs> But not Van Hagar, right? I mean, it's Fuck like, no, like what no. are, okay, all right. Diamond Dave. Okay. That's some crime fighting music. Yeah, yeah. Panama. Yes, Panama. <laughs> God damn it. Panama? Yeah, Pan. I mean, how do they say it in the song, Dan? Panama! There you go. That's you don't how, talk when the you way you sing. No, in that case, you do. Like, Mick Jagger doesn't even sound like he has an English accent when he sings. Yeah, but singing's different than talking. Mick Jagger's no Diamond Dave. He's way better. What? Yes! Are you fucking kidding me? They're like, doing different things. They are, but Jagger's better. At, at what, exactly? At being a front, well, we're just saying front man. Yeah. I guess David Lee Roth is kind of, well, no, he, he is Freddie the, Mercury is the ultimate front man. I put Freddie Mercury and Axl Rose over David Lee Roth. And, uh, I, and I love Diamond Dave. I don't know, man. Dave, you know, Dave TV, like, you know, he, yeah. he was able to host his own MTV stuff. He was that much of a personality. His videos were great. Yeah, too. Like just his solo stuff. And yeah, totally. Yeah. 
Just like he made those like kind of schmaltzy, campy, bullshit old songs work in a new way. Yeah. Because he's fucking David Lee Roth. You ever read that Crazy from the Heat autobiography? Nope. I heard it's insane. I, I probably should read that. He's he's lived a life, Jeff. Oh yeah, I mean he was a fucking paramedic. <laughs> Wait, what? He was saving lives in New York City. When? Like ten years ago? Five years ago? I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow, okay. There's death to David Lee Roth. <laughs> what the fuck is Mick Jagger doing? <laughs> How many lives has he saved he's, recent, he's, recently? Uh, hanging recently. Hanging out with Lauren Michaels, I don't know. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I'd hang out with more Michaels. Sure, yeah, but... <laughs> Still, no denying that Freddy is the ultimate frontman, right? I think he's fantastic. Okay. I mean, David is in the conversation for sure. He could kick real good. Yeah, he could kick great. He's the guy that made you want to kick. Yeah, yeah. It's like him and Luke Hang, basically. Yep. <laughs> All right. Who's better, David Lee Roth or Liu Kang? Uh, In I think, general, I think David Lee Roth has like better martial arts fighting skills. Okay. Um, David Lee Roth, as far as I know, doesn't turn into a dragon. Can he drop arcade machines on people's heads? Yeah, definitely. He can. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. David Lee Roth has probably turned into a dragon at least once. I'm going in. You know, I've read the book. <laughs> Look at this guy. That guy up there? What's this guy doing? Oh, outside. Okay. We're so, going to run around the back end here and just shoot that guy. That worked pretty well. All the drug tables. Take that, drug tables. Was that a guy's name? Drug tables? Drug tables? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's officer drug tables to you. <laughs> Oh, hey, that's, oh. That's, yeah, see, that's, they wow. tell you in the tutorial, like, hey, buddy, you should really, like, rotate Jeez. the camera to look for hidden guys. And I was like, man, they should have designed that game better so I didn't have to have camera control. <laughs> and then they're like, no, we designed it this way. And I'm like, I guess that's a valid approach. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so let's go back, and I think we got some, uh, oh, I don't know where I, is there just a, LA Cops Academy, is that the, no, this is the tutorial. That's not, this is not, this is not what we're doing here. Is it tap X to lock on or do you have to hold it? It's tap. Okay, good. I like how cops is capitalized. Uh, okay, I guess I have to like go into a mission to then select cops and spend my points here. Yeah. This is kind of, this is a little clunky. In terms of just like, can I spend them on anyone? Or oh, okay, yeah, it's just four points overall. I can spend them on any one of the cops that I want, but it's a shared pool. Oh, okay. Cool. Jeff, you probably know something about liquor in uh, paper bags, right? You're familiar with the concept? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I am. I was under the impression always that the reason you drink liquor in paper bags was to cover the label so, oh, technically you might not be drinking liquor, so you could like drink it on your lawn or in an alley or something and you couldn't get arrested, right? That's my understanding, yeah. That was my understanding too, but I had a bottle of Old Crow whiskey in a paper bag and I was in an alley in Kansas. Uh -huh. I was drinking it, as you do. Yeah, yeah. And I was just hanging out with some friends we were trying to figure out what house party to go to. And a cop came in and gave me a damn ticket for uh, consumption in public. Well, now, I mean, I think it's a really thin, I mean, paper bag's not thick. No one, you're not fooling anybody. Well, I know, but I thought it was just technically like, hey, it could maybe not be liquor. Going in. And so, like, he couldn't see the old crow label, but he still gave me a damn ticket and it cost me like hundreds of dollars. Hmm. Yeah, I, th I don't think that that's, I don't think you can legally defend against a drinking in public ticket with, it was in a paper bag. I think it's, it's, it's like, it's one of those customary things that like, everyone thinks should be, it's like the whole like, they don't actually have to tell you that they're a cop. Okay. I, oh, I just, Jesus. Oh my God. This, I just thought that was the whole point of drinking out of a paper bag. Yeah, I think it is too, but I, I think it's actually, it doesn't get around the legal ramifications of it. As, as much as you think it should. Huh. That was an expensive bottle of Old Crow whiskey. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, technically I think if you're 
urinating in public, like, you know, <laughs> in, in, in some circumstances, they could make you register as a sex offender. That's why I stopped urinating in public. It's a great reason. Yeah, because I heard that, like, yeah, you got to go, like, door to door and say you're a skeezy dude just because you had to pee real bad and you went up to a tree at night, you know? Yeah. I mean, but, it's a fairly skeezy thing to do. But I mean, only when it's like super necessary. There are times where it's like, man, I really need to pee right now, and there's no place in public restroom, so I guess I'll go on this tree. But that's not like being a sex offender. I'm with you, man. That seems like quite a jump, quite a leap from I need to pee to, oh, good Lord, I'm a menace to society. It is indecent exposure. You are technically... Yeah, but I'm not like standing in the middle of the road with my dong out. You go up behind a tree or you go up to a fence or behind a dumpster or something. I think, you know, there's like some, some shades of gray in that, and we should probably write to our local congressman about it. Okay, well, I have for a while. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. How, and how's that been going? And I haven't heard back yet. All right, change.org slash... Right, right. Whatever that... Whatever their, the petition is. That's, that's uh, yeah, <laughs> that's... What, what do we got levels-wise here? Looks like we got some bonus levels up here. But uh, yeah, you know, kind of eight scenarios in this area, and I'm not sure if there are actually more than that. But how, how much is it? It's 15 bucks. Okay. I think it's conceptually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Even if I am playing like shit today. Uh, it, it looks like if you're one of those dudes that really likes uh, like the really hard stuff in Hotline Miami, it looks like this is pretty difficult. Well, it's stuff that like, you know, it, it's actually not that difficult. I'm just going too fast. Oh, okay. It just seems like you really got to slow it down. Gotcha, okay. And and that's that for me is always a problem. I don't yeah, like I to see. slow it down. I don't either. I mean, I, I, I think about it like, what would David Lee Roth do? He wouldn't slow down for exactly. anything. No. No. No, he Pe wouldn't. Pedal to the metal. I mean, I, I would even say, like, what would Sammy Hagar do? Mm, well, he, he can't drive He 55. can't drive 55. No, no. No. That's too slow for him. This is the depressing part about all that is, like, Sammy Hagar solo, before all that stuff, was fine. See, I don't know the much Red about Hagar. I don't know much about him. The Red Rock, that I Can't Drive 55 video was good. I'm going to Cabo in, like, a month and a half, and isn't he just, like, constantly there I think drinking? he's the mayor. Yeah, I think you have to, like, to get in, you have to basically agree to have shots of tequila okay. with with Sammy Hagar. I'm going to try to drink with Sammy Hagar while I'm down there. That sounds, well, <laughs> hey, go for it. You know what? I was going to say, that doesn't sound like a good time, because... <laughs> But, you know, at this point, maybe Sammy Hagar has suffered enough. <laughs> After all these years of, of uh, everyone of sane mind saying, like, man, fuck Sammy Hagar, right? <laughs> like, whatever, man. If someone came to you and said, do you want to be the lead singer of Van Halen? Your answer would probably be like, fucking yeah. Yeah. But well, wouldn't the third guy be more embarrassing? Because no one even knows his name. Yeah, that guy sucks. Gary Sharon. That's right. He was a guy yeah. from Extreme or whatever, right? Right. right. Now, that band sucks <laughs> more than words. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> well, but whatever. That to me, like that song is totally perfect for what Van Halen became. Total shit. Yeah, yeah. Van Halen was great under Roth, and that's it. And that's it. LA Cops is fifteen bucks. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Jeff.